Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. I got this fantastic example posted in our Photoshop group, which I'll link in the description from Iris Santos, who asked, how would I or the community retouch this image if you don't have a lot of time? And let me show you the results I got after spending just a couple of minutes. And you can see here, it's a dramatic improvement, although it's not perfect. I only spent about three minutes and I got help from a plugin that we created called Infinite Skin. And the reason I think this is such an important video is because I used to spend tons of time going through the process of healing and then cloning and then dodging and burning just to get a great result. And although it was a fantastic result, I used to use it because other plugins would require you to A, go outside of Photoshop in order for you to smooth out, quote unquote, smooth out skin. And B, the other issue is that the anatomy of the area that it's smoothing out is in retained. So it looks very fake and artificial and I just didn't like it. And I wanted some good in between media middle ground. Um, and so our company, Infinite Tools, it created this plugin here called Infinite Skin. And I didn't know if it was gonna be possible, but this is something that I considered like the holy grail of kind of post-production where I wanted a heads up and an expedited way to you know, modify skin texture without compromising the anatomy and the transition. So this is what we came up with. And it even has a lot of controls. You can determine exactly how much you want. And it's divided into texture and color independently. So it expedites it for you and keeps it all intact in layers in Photoshop. So you don't have to go outside of Photoshop and get come back into Photoshop with a flattened file that might not be perfect or rely on camera raw to smooth things or whatever it is. It's all done in Photoshop. You don't have to leave. It does it for you. It creates a mask. It's fantastic. Let me show you kind of how it works. And again, just a quick before and after. And I think this is a really good starting base um, along with a couple of other things I did. So I ran Infinite Skin and I did a little bit of editing and I'm gonna show you the process and the steps in order for me to achieve the results that I got here. And keep in mind, although this did take me a few minutes, I'm gonna be explaining it so it'll take me a little bit longer because I'm gonna slow down. But as you know, when you've, if any of you have ever seen me working, you know how fast I can go. So firstly, what I'll do, and I recommend these settings is, let's go ahead and bring this setting here in the, in the middle, right? And then we'll adjust accordingly. Next, I'm gonna make sure that this black mask icon is selected so that whatever results we get, it attaches a black mask to it, and then you can brush it in automatically. And you just don't want any of these other ones selected just yet, because they're not really necessary for the moment. Okay, simple enough, right? Everything's right down the center. I'm gonna hit create here. And what it does is it uses artificial intelligence and kind of machine learning to identify the radius of frequency separation that it's gonna apply and automatically apply it for you based on the image that's open. If that confuses you, you don't have to worry about it at all. All you have to know is it creates a perfect um, solution for you and adds a mask. So now I'm gonna add my brush tool and I'm gonna make sure it's selected to white. I'm gonna make sure my flow is set to 100%. And then I'm simply gonna brush in here. Now what this tool does is it cuts into the retouching time by minimizing the blotchiness that is there underneath all of that texture. And it does it in a way where it doesn't push it too far based on the transitions of the skin, right? And I think that is very important. It doesn't go too far, but it just goes a little bit less than what you want. It doesn't take away the thing that you have to heal, but it does minimize the time it's gonna take for you to retouch. And this is huge for anybody who has clients that deals with blotchy skin or whatever it is that might be caused by blood flow circulation issues, color issues. Um, and this happens in many instances. Maybe they're sitting down for a while and blood flow has changed. Maybe it's too cold. Maybe the skin's too bumpy or whatever that situation is. Um, and here's how this works. Once this mask is applied, right, you can see it minimizes it and then you can adjust the settings. Now the settings here have two sliders. Number one, the clarity, which is basically the skin texture, right? If I move this left and right here, you'll see that the texture adjust according to kind of how much you want. I think for me in this instance, somewhere halfway is perfect. And again, the smoothing, what the smoothing does is underneath the texture, you have those color tones. And if I adjust the smoothing, it'll adjust how much those tones blend with each other. So in reality, you can also bring the clarity all the way up 
and keep all the skin texture if you want and just adjust the smoothing and then it will blend it for you or my preference personally is just keeping it halfway in between for both okay and the reason I like this so much is because now it's a good middle ground like that and all I have to do is add another blank layer go with my healing brush and get rid of these little blemishes here and again this keeps it all in one group here so you can see the settings that it has here it's divided into many different layers that you don't have to control because the sliders help you control the opacity between all of these layers it does an advanced frequency separation with multiple frequency separations and texture separations basically and allows you to control it right through the sliders themselves now anyways um, that's why I think the user interface is very intuitive it's just sliders it's easy for anybody to use you don't have to know anything about frequency separation or trying to do any of that stuff and I'm just gonna go ahead and heal out some of these little texture blemishes like that just really quickly And all I'm basically doing is using my healing brush, I'm sampling with alter option next to any of these blemishes. My brush is set to 0% hardness, 25% spacing as it should be, and current and below with my sample size. Just in case anybody was wondering about my preferred settings for healing brush, I'm using this as a standard brush tool. Right? And let me just go ahead and remove these couple of things here. Perfect. You can see it's just a couple of these blemishes here. Now already you can see how far we've gotten. Now the next thing you can do is you can run frequency separation. And this is also an action that I have in my educational course. In case you haven't seen it, I'll also link it below in case you're looking for retouching education. And what I basically have in this action is a blank layer in between underneath texture and above color. And what I basically am doing is just blending in the transitions here. You can also use a mixer brush too. But the reason I think this step with infinite skin is really important is because it allows you to keep that anatomy intact and those transitions intact. Because if you try to say run frequency separation manually from the beginning, you'd have a lot of brushing to do or a lot of mixing to do. And what happens is it tends to blend things way too much way too fast so this way it gives you a good starting base where you have to do less retouching to begin with saving you at least most of the time and that's kind of what my goal is for having infinite skin is having a good foundation so you're retouching less and then if you want you can do some dodge and burn work just to kind of complete the process and I always like to do a little bit of dodge and burn work again based on how picky your clients are you might not even have to do this or you might even want to you know supplement this with something else whatever your preferred workflow is to you know finish off the little details here but for me if I don't like doing too much frequency separation so you could just continue doing frequency separation if you want to complete the process but again the reason I always encourage less manual work for frequency separation is you might change the transitions and, and it might just look too flat or something which again is why I always like using infinite skin in the beginning so that you are able to just retain as much as possible before jumping in and my hopes is that it saves you know 50% of your time before you begin the editing process right and again this is not meant for say high-end retouching but maybe you have a lot of clients or just a lot of images to go through or just crazy situations like this and I feel like this is a great example to showcase exactly what this can do, where it fits into a workflow. Because if it can do, if it can expedite this process um, for people, then I think it will really, really help just cut down time and save money and just, you know, all the good stuff that happens. And if you are a working photographer and you understand the situation, then you know right away how advantageous this can be. Um, and the, better, the best part is you have that finesse control 
So you can determine how much or how little you want to do. So you can see here in a few minutes with explanation, I'm able to minimize that considering where we started from. And just a reminder, I know this is not like I mentioned, high end retouching or anything like that. But it is a huge and dramatic difference compared to where we began. And if you spent even more time, you could probably get even further than I did. But yeah, I'm just doing these little bits here with my dodge and burn. But you know, the diminishing returns happens the more time you spend on a retouch, obviously. Um, but the, you know, the main difference coming from the beginning is I think super important. And now I'm just burning here, getting just filling in these lighter spots really quickly, things that are much harder for for people to do through automated procedures. So there you go, just a little bit of dodge and burn, right? A little bit of frequency separation. Um, but in combination with this step here, you can see it's a, a dramatic difference from kind of where we began. And uh, if you want to, you can add sharpening afterwards, you can add some grain afterwards, um, just to kind of add a little bit of that texture and grit back if you so choose to. But I think that's a huge difference here. Let me go ahead and put them side by side so you can check it out. I already have this before laid out for us. And I'll go ahead and put the description in case in, the link in the description in case you want to check out Infinite Skin. Um, and there's tons of other videos on the site as well, like how we deal with babies or you know all kinds of stuff. Um, so I usually combine that with uh, Unify, and what Unify does is it fixes color variation. So if you have issues with some parts being too red, some parts being too yellow, it creates a nice gradient map and analyzes the skin to ensure that. The, the tone or the colors per se of everything is more uniform. And you know, it removes all the tints that might splash on the skin. Like you might have a green tint here because the floor is a different color or things like that. So in between those two, that's kind of a, a really quick workflow that allows you to still maintain some normalcy for people who don't want to go too far. So anyways, I hope this video helped um, and gave you some insight into how you can speed up your workflow a little bit with uh, this plugin and thank you for your question and I'll be sure to join our Facebook group as well and um, check out all of our content and join our group so you can interact and ask any questions that you like. Anyways, hope you're having a great day and thank you so much for watching this video.